just memorize? Ah, the address for the Lord's Prayer. So it's not that much, it's pretty quick. So I'll try to set that down five minutes. Do you know where we're going to use the number? Oh, okay. Thank you. All right. All right, so number for today was the Lord's Prayer Address. So it's the very first line of the Lord's Prayer, Our Father, who art in heaven, said every Sunday. Did anyone memorize this for today? All right, well, I will need to say memorize if you haven't looked at it. We'll speak together a few times. Make sure for next time to learn the next part of the Lord's Prayer. I think that's in the spreadsheet because they're here to access the spreadsheet, which is everything we're supposed to say right now. So we'll get to that. Um, that was it. We have a Bible passage for today either. I think next time we get do a Bible passage, so be looking for that. Okay. So let's start then by reading this all together. Right? Our Father who art in heaven. What does this mean? With these words, God tenderly invites us to believe that he is our true father and that we are his true children, so that we may praise him as boldly and confidently as dear children ask their dear father. All right. So at the very first line of the Lord's Prayer that we say, we're saying, we're saying, God, you are our father in heaven. And what does that mean? It talks about what does that mean for us? God is saying that I am your father, you're my children. You can come to me just like you might go ask your dad for something or any father figure you have. And God, our heavenly father, he's the perfect father. He's the best father you could ever have. So he's even greater than any father that you might have. That's how great our heavenly father is. All right, so we're on page 243 in the Catechism book. Or you can do other books. Or you gotta start bringing a book, okay? So a couple of times it's not gonna be fun trying to take notes on. But I don't think we take notes in it, so yeah. <sighs> I don't okay. Well it was such a share of dates tonight then. Bring your books next time because all right, so before, I'm oh, sorry, I'm on page, I apologize. So 236 in your confirmation book, 236. Mm -hmm. The page that I start on. 236. And in connections, it is page 100 and 109. Uh, so connection book 109, confirmation 236. All right, so the first thing we need to talk about is what is prayer? Before we learn the Lord's Prayer, we need to talk about what are we doing in prayer? Who are we talking to? What are what does it mean for us to say a prayer? All right, so to start, I want you guys to write down in 30 seconds everything that you can think of that you can pray for. So I'll give you a piece of scrap right here. Wait for our time to start. Um, okay. so, Jesus, that makes it a fair advantage for everyone. All right. So, think of anything you can pray for. Ready, set, go.
10 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Hands down. Hands down. All right, that's what we're going to do. We're going to start with Myra. We're going to go around the circle. And every time someone says something you have on your list, you need to cross it off on your own list. We're going to keep going so we run out of things that everyone has. So, Myra, first thing on your list. Family. Family. You put your family. Hi, Rose. Put your family. So if you have family right now on your list, erase it or cross it off with your pen. Yeah. So well, we're just getting started. We're talking about prayer today. So praying to God our Father. We're just doing a little introduction activity, seeing how many people can write down that we can pray for. Ethan, what's something you have? What? Friends? Yep, that works. Friends. Jay. Hmm? Something that God has? Oh, someone that dies? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, family moments. All right, Laura, what did you have? You had Jay? Okay, well, Jay, <laughs> Jay kind of goes on her friends, but Jay, you can bring Jay if you want. Myra, what do you have? Your what? My gratitude for the Gratitude? Oh, thanks. You can pray for the place sometimes. All right, you still got something that you want to say yet? No, you can say, oh, Jane, what about you? Hope. Oh. Help. Help. Jeez, I can't hear you. Yeah, you can ask that, bro. There are all sorts of problems that you have. Laura, do you have anything else? Everyone. Everyone? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, it's true. Everyone. Good. Enemies, friends, family. Myra, you got stuff? What else you got? Church family. Church family. Okay, so fellow believers. Jay, you got other stuff or you all out now? Laura, are you all out? You got something else? To... You're all out. All right, Myra, what else, what else do you have? What, what last thing do you have? Strength for faith. Strength for faith, yeah, strength for faith. Anything else? That's it. Okay, that's a pretty good list for 30 seconds. So yeah, family, friends, Jay, dead loved, loved ones. You can pray for people who are grieving a loss of someone. Fellow believers, faith, everybody, yeah, even your enemies. We'll talk about that tonight. Pray for God to help you out through tough times. And thanks. You can say thanks to God for the different things He does for you. All right. So that's a little introduction. You guys thinking about what do we pray for? So the first question we need to answer is what even is prayer? So that's going to be question 239 in your book. We're going to look at 239 Catechism in your connection book. We're on page 119. Sorry, man. Page 109. All right, so first passage, we got Psalm 19, verse 14. Jay, can you read that first passage for us? It's on page 236. Okay. The first passage on that page. May these words of my mouth and these meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my love. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So you guys know what the word meditation means? Kind of, you kind of think of like, maybe like, maybe you guys like you're meditating, like, oh, uh, people are sitting across, like, even like calm. Well, that's kind of a similar thing to meditation, but when you meditate, what you're doing is you're, you're thinking about things, you're thinking through things, you're, you're, you're discussing things with yourself. And with prayer, it's the meditation of our heart. So heart doesn't mean literally your heart, it means your inner being. So, you know, you have your voice in your head, your brain, your conscience. So prayer is a time when our, our, we're talking to God. We're meditating on what God tells us, and we're thinking through the different things God says to us, and we're talking back to him, too. So it's uh, using our conscience to talk to God. Second verse, Psalm 28.7. You can go ahead and read that one. Psalm 28.7. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him and he loves me. All right. So the Lord is his strength. He's a shield. And what does our heart do with the Lord? It trusts in him. Yeah. So when we pray, it's also showing that we trust God. So it's a conversation you have with God that shows we're trusting in him. 
And finally, Philippians 4, verse 6 tells us the last part about prayer. Myra, would you go ahead and read that one, please? Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, petition. petition. and giving, but present, present your request to God. Thank you. Yeah. So that verse is saying, you shouldn't worry about anything, but in whatever happens in your life, by prayer and petition, that means your requests to God, um, your, your thoughts that you have, Present your requests to God. So when we pray, not only are we talking to God, not only do we show we trust in God, but we also bring God certain requests we have, certain problems we have. So that's any of these things that we have here, any requests you can have, dear God, please take care of Jamie. You. you can bring that request to God. If you want to pray for Jamie, you can go back to that one. All right. So... How would you define prayer using those three, those three verses that we just looked at? So I want you, I guess, on the you have room still on a piece of paper that we handed out, the scrap pieces. I want you to take one minute, think of your own definition of prayer. So I want to tell you, I'm normally there with so all right. So use those, those small square sheets, take one minute, write down a definition of a prayer based on those three verses. About 15 seconds left. Five, four, three, two, and one. All right. Laura, let's hear what you had written now. How would you define prayer? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so talking to God to, to talk to him about all sorts of things for thanks, to ask him for help. Jane, what'd you have written down? About the same thing? All right, yeah, so the, the definition that uh, going to a proper definition. So it's an act of worship, which we speak to God from our hearts. So it's our conversation with God. God gives us his word in the Bible. Yeah. So we get God's word in prayer is how we respond to that. Prayer. It's how we talk back to God, how we hear our requests. All right. What does prayer continue? So let's say hypothetical situation. You have a friend that comes up to you and asks you a bunch of questions about prayer, including what is prayer? Why do you pray? Also, why do you pray to God? With your partner, draw a passage, read it, and use and use it to give your friend an answer. And now we have you guys write down these answers on page 111 in your connection book. So that's the last, that's the page with a bunch of blanks on it. There's a bunch of blanks on it. So if we have five people and there's five passages, this actually works out really well. I'll have each of you do one passage. I'll do a really good passage. I want you to think about it and think, what does this passage tell me about prayer? And I will get our Bibles to the Robert and Rose. All right. All right, open up your slip, see what passage it has on it. If you have your connection book, the, the number behind the passage is what page it is it's on in the catechism book. So if you have your catechism book, you can use that. Otherwise, if you just have the reference, we'll get you guys open up to that. Maybe you have 
So if you want more minute, again, read your passage, read your passage, think about what does this tell me about prayer? And if you can't give you an answer, just kind of think about it for a little bit, and when we get to you, you can just read your passage, and then we'll talk about it. If you can't think of what this is telling about prayer. But try to think of something. Five seconds. Four, three, two, and one. All right. Start with Psalm 9, verse 10. Who has Psalm 9, verse 10? Jay. Okay, Jay, can you start by reading your passage for our prayer Those who know me and trust in me, Lord, have never forsaken me. Yeah, forsaken me, so turn your back, forget them. So, Jay, what did you write down? What does that passage teach us about prayer? Yeah. So yeah. So when your friend asks you why do you pray, well, I pray because I trust God. God's never gonna gonna stab me in back. God's always gonna have my back. I trust you. Yeah. So that's one thing. So as we talk about, you make sure you write those down. Uh, page one hundred eleven. I'll write them down for two. If I can find my marker, I'm gonna put it. Oh, well, go to this one. All right, so first of all, we learned that we can trust God. All right, who had Jeremiah 31, verse 3? All right, now go ahead and read that one. All right, what did you, what were you saying about that passage? What did that teach you about prayer? Um, that Jesus loves us, so he invites us to pray so that we may vent or repent. He is truly kind and loves us ever and everything. So you can vent or repent. I like that. That's a good way to put it. Yeah, you do all sorts of things. You can talk about about lots of things. Yeah, but the main thing you touched on right away is that God loves me. So because God loves me, I can go ahead and pray. I know I have a God that's going to love me and listen to me. So prayer is showing us talking God. It's the way that we know God loves us. Sorry, I'm getting my back up here. Oh, I have to do this. All right. So, and then Joshua 21:45. Rose, did you have that one? Did you read that for us? Not one of all the Lord's good promises to Israel plan ever was fulfilled. All right. What do you think about that passage? What does that teach us about prayer? You don't know. All right. Okay, let me get this. We'll talk about it. one sec. Let me get this pulled back up. As Zoom decided to be annoying. Okay. All right. So, Joshua 21, verse 45. So, not one of all the Lord's good promises failed to Israel, failed. Everyone was fulfilled. So, if you ask someone to do something, you want them to do it, right? If I were to ask Myra, Myra, could you go get me a glass of water from the kitchen? And she said yes, but then she didn't actually do it. How do you think that made me feel? Yeah, yeah probably sad, like, Myra, you said you do it. What the hell? You're, I, I say, Myra, are you lying to me? You go in and grab a glass of water for me. That's not cool. God, he doesn't break his promises. If God says he's going to do something, he's going to do it. Because he's perfect, because he's our heavenly father. So that's another part about prayer. We ask God to do things when, when God tells us we can pray to him and he'll listen. He keeps his promises. 
So when we pray, we can trust God's promises too. That's why I pray because I know God is here because He promises to you. All right, Psalm 55, verse 2. Learn that one. Laura, is that you? Can you read that passage for us? All right, thank you. What does that passage add on about prayer? Um, um, Let's look at that verse again. So this passage is talking about God, and what does it say God does with prayer? Does it say God dismisses prayer? Does God ignore our prayers? No, what does it say he does to our prayers? He listens, yeah. So I can pray to God because I know he's going to listen to me. God listens to our prayer. All right, last passage, Jeremiah 10, 10. That must be Ethan then. Go ahead and read that one. So the Lord is the true God. He is the living God and he is known. So when we pray to God, why do we pray to God? Sorry, that was a bad question. That was not a question for me now. So this passage is telling us, talking about God. He's the living God. He's the eternal king. Is there a God other than the God? No, yeah. So why do I pray to God? Well, this passage tells me that God is the true God. So of course I'm going to pay, pray to the true God. I'm not going to pray to some made up thing. I'm not going to pray to a statue that's not real, doesn't have any power. When we pray, we pray to the true God. All right. So if someone ever asks you, why do you pray? Why do you pray to God? You can tell them, well, I pray because it's my way of showing God I trust in him, and I know that he loves me enough that he's going to listen to me. He's going to keep his promises to me. And the reason I pray to God is because he's the only true God, the only true God that will do all these things for me. So that is kind of a summary of what prayer is for you guys. All right, so kind of apply some of the stuff we, we learned about. Analyze this statement and respond to it. We should pray to Mary, since she is the Holy Mother of Jesus and can bring our requests to the Father. Myra, take the first crack at it. Well... Yes, she is the mother of Jesus, but she isn't act, she isn't head like she isn't like Jesus. She can't do what Jesus can do. She isn't holy like he is holy. She just gave birth to him and raised him. Yeah, so maybe the first part of the statement we talk about is the word holy. Mary, when she was on earth, was just like you and me. She was a normal human being. She wasn't holy. She wasn't perfect on earth. God used her. Yeah, to give birth to Jesus. But she wasn't holier than we are. She was a normal person. All right. So, first of all, Mary's not holy. Jesus is. What else with this statement might raise some questions? I guess I'm just asking straight up. Should we pray to Mary? No, yeah, good. See, in that shakes, no. The Bible never tells us to pray to Mary, or for that matter, to anyone else other than Jesus, other than God. We know that Jesus brings our requests before God, and Jesus is God, so that means God hears our prayers. We don't have to go through Mary or someone else. We have direct access to God. We don't need someone else to talk to us yet. All right, agree to your question. Let's start with thumbs up, thumbs down on this one. God hears the prayers of all people. No matter what, some agree or disagree of all people, no matter what. Seen a lot of thumbs up. All right, keep that thought in your head. We're going to come back to this question, but let's look at the passages that we have first. So, this is question 243, page 238 in the Catechism. We're going to use those passages right there. Page 238, bottom of that page. The first passage we should read is Isaiah 59. Verse 2. Myra, go ahead and read that. Your, your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear. All right, so remember the word iniquities. We talked about that earlier this year, and it's another word for sin. So it's kind of saying your sin, it separates you from God. Your sins, they have hidden God's face, so he will not hear. So does that sound like God hears the prayers of all people then? 
God's saying he, sometimes he doesn't listen, he doesn't hear. It. And he's saying, people who are sinful, he doesn't hear their requests. Okay, but I'm sinful, so how can God say he listens to my prayers? Well, that's let's look at the next passage we have in that. In the top of the next page, Psalm 145, verse 18 and 19. Jay, can you read that one for us, please? The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him and shall He fulfills the rights of those who hear him. Okay, so that's the first part. So the first part of that is that the Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him. So this passage, this one's talking about believers, people who have faith in God. When people have faith in God, they call on him in what? And what does the passage say? It's right in the middle of the passage. It says, all who call on him in, in truth. Yeah, so someone who doesn't have true faith, someone who doesn't have true faith, they can't, they don't know how to call to God. They don't have the faith that, that they need to pray to God. So when we get to a question like this, we actually have to say disagree. If people are calling out to some other false gods that they say, well, God's all the same. So it doesn't matter which God I pray to. You'll hear me. That's not what God's word says. God says your sin separates you from me. Only those who know me know the true God. I'll hear their prayer. I'll listen to their prayers. But there are some people when God doesn't listen to them because their sin separates them from God because they don't have true faith. But my thought of that is God always hear our prayers. Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, we're sinful still. That's that's true. But we know God. We know what he said in his word. So God always hears our prayers. That's a comfort you can always have. All right. So next question we have. Prove me wrong on this one. If I go to God in prayer and ask him to give me $100, God will definitely give it to me. No. No. Mm-hmm. All right, explain. Because I there's a passage in me that says very truly I tell you, my father will give you whatever you ask in my name. So does that mean God's gonna be hundred bucks by asking for it? Mario, you want to come back again? Okay, go ahead. I don't think that's exactly what it means. Kind of because yes, there are a lot of stories of how missionaries they were broken and that from the money mm-hmm. through God. Technically, yes, but mm-hmm. I feel like if you ask God for $100, it's not going to magically appear out of thin air because that's not what it sounds like. Yeah, okay. So I could ask God for it, but it's not going to just magically pop out of nowhere, right? God might work so many to do it, sure. So when we pray, God does God tell us to, to bring any request we want to him? Does he tell us that? Yeah, God tells us to bring every request you have. The passage I just read is John 16.3. My father will give you whatever you ask, but it's important that he finishes that passage in my name. So Jesus, he taught the disciples how to pray. We're already talking about the Lord's Prayer a little bit. But part of that meant when you pray, you ask God, your will be done. So this is a very important thing to remember when it comes to prayer. So I'm actually going to write this down maybe under question 245 or on the extra space on 211. When we pray to God, we ask that his will be done. So that means God, yes, I can I can ask God for a hundred bucks, but I'm always gonna end my prayer with saying, God, let your will be done. God, you do what you know is best for me because you'll give me what I need. And I can request this, but God, I trust that you're gonna give me what I actually need. So maybe I ask God for a hundred bucks, but God doesn't want me to have a hundred bucks right now. All right, let God's will be done. I will let God choose to do what he wants because he's a lot wiser than I, that's for sure. All right, another question about prayer. Agree or disagree question? I should only pray when I can pray for at least five minutes. Do we agree with that one or disagree with that one? Yeah, see lots of thumbs down. Lots of thumbs down, yeah. Good job. So let's read the passage at the top of page 240 to answer this question too. You guys all have the right answer. First Thessalonians, first Thessalonians 5, verse 17. Top of page 240. Myra, go ahead and read that. Yeah, two words, pretty straightforward, right? Doesn't say pray only when you have when you have a certain amount of time to do it. You can pray whenever. Can you pray when you're walking in the hallway at school? Yeah. Can you pray when you're getting in the car and drive to church? Yeah. 
You can pray anytime. God wants you says anytime that you have that you want to pray to me, I'll always listen. You can pray anytime you want. All right, what should we pray for? We had a huge list of certain things that we said earlier. We hit a lot of them, but we're just going to kind of go through the, some passages quick, which remind us of certain things we can pray for. So, all right, first one, First Timothy 2, verses 1 and 2 on page 240. Anything to read that passage for us? First Timothy 2, verses 1 and 2, top of page 240. I urge them, I urge them first of all that position of prayer, intercession, and thanksgiving made for all people, for the kings and all those in authority, that we may live a peaceful, quiet life in all of love and wisdom. So let me ask this question based on that passage Who should we pray for? Everyone. Everyone, yeah. There's not a limit. And this passage specifically talks about kings and people in authority. So we should pray for all people, everyone who's above us, our mom and dad, our, our presidents, our representative in government, anyone who's in a position of authority. It kind of sounds kind of like the what family again when we talk about that. All right, Psalm 51, verse 9. Jake, can you read that one for us? Lock out all my iniquities. Yeah, lock out all my iniquities. So I'm saying cover it up so that I can't see it. Cover up my sin, God, so I don't see them. So the psalmist, the, the person who wrote the psalm, is saying, God, please don't look at my sins. What does that sound like he's asking for? Yeah, forgiveness. He's asking God for forgiveness. So in prayer. We can pray for all people. We can pray that God will forgive us our sins because we repent of our sins. Psalm 136, verse 1. Myra, read that one for us. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his love is with Yeah. So what's something else we can pray for? Thanks. Thanks, yeah. So how can we pray? We can pray only in the way that gives thanks to God for what he does. All right. And last one, Matthew 6, verse 11. Last passage, it's on page 241 there. Do you think you read that passage for us? Middle of 241. Mm -hmm. Matthew 6, verse 11. So that's the day of our daily bread. All right. What does that mean when we're asked God for daily bread? Yeah, so the things that we need every day. I'm guessing all of you had at least something to eat today, right? So God gives us things that we need to eat every day. It looks like Laura got Chick-fil-A, so a little jealous of that. That looks really tasty. But, yeah, so we ask God, we say, God, give me the things that I need every day to take care of. So my clothes, my food, a bed to sleep in, all those things, God, please give them. So those are all sorts of things that we should pray for. All right. As we said earlier, there's a whole lot of things we can pray for. And we only did for 30 seconds earlier, but if we went for like five minutes, we could all probably write 100 things, just anything. We can anything to God. All right, respond to this statement. So this next year, we have another presidential election coming up. And it's, if you go on any type of social media, you'll see a lot of people saying a lot of things about both of these guys up here. So respond to the statement, though. I won't pray for a president I don't like. How would you respond to that? Laura, what, what do you think you would say first to that? Maybe let me ask you this. Is this a, a right thing to say? So no, it's not a right thing. What about you, Rose? What do you think? What how might you respond to that saying? All right, Myra. Actually, you should pray for your the, your president because um a president needs a lot of help. All right, well, okay. So any, anyone in authority, they're going to need a lot of help. It's a, it's, a, it's a big job to do to be president of the United States. It's a lot of work. And well, let's think, what does God's word say about this? Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. So your president is considered your neighbor. He's someone in your life that, that you should love as you love yourself. So is it loving to purposely not pray for someone? No, it's not. That's that's really that that's hurtful. It's it's selfish. God tells us to love our neighbors. 
Remember one of the passages we just read, it said, pray for everyone, and it said, for kings and all those in authority. He's not our king, but it's, it's our president, which is the person in authority for us. So God's word tells us, it doesn't matter who's in charge, I want you to pray for them, because they're my representatives. Oh, so we pray for them still. Well, yeah. All right, one more agree disagree question before we get into the Lord's Prayer. So we have two agree disagree. We're going to start with the first one up here. Longer prayers are better. What do you think, Jay? Kind of in the middle there? Why? Well, John, explain, explain, explain your middle a little bit. Give me one thing you're thinking of. It doesn't matter how long you're doing Bingo. God doesn't say, I only am going to listen to prayers that are 200 words in it. God never says that. Remember the passage we read, pray continually? So that means, it doesn't mean you have to pray a, a super long prayer every time. It just means pray. So it, like Jade was right on the money. It doesn't matter how long it is. It matters if, if am I praying. God just wants us to pray. All right, second degree, disagree. Prayers only count if you can fold, if you fold your hands, close your eyes, and bow your head. Lord, shake your head, no. Yeah. God does not anywhere in the Bible say, this is exactly the, the type of position you take when you pray. Do we tradition, is it just kind of a tradition that we do those things? Yeah, it is. It's, it's a way that we show respect. It's a way that we show we're talking to God. But you can be saying a prayer right now without folding your hands, without bowing your head. And God still listens because he didn't say there needs to be a certain magical way. It's just a conversation with yourself and God. All right, so now we're going to talk about the Lord's Prayer. And this is what we're getting into, what we should remember for tonight, the address. So when the disciples were on earth with Jesus, they asked Jesus, Lord, teach us how to pray. And after they asked him that, Jesus says, okay, I'll teach you. And that's when he gives them the Lord's Prayer. And he starts with the address, is what it's called. It's the very first line in that prayer. Our Father who art in heaven. So we read it once earlier. We're all going to read it again together right now. So I'll start start the first line there. Three, two, one. Our Father who art in heaven. What does this mean? With these words, God tenderly invites us to believe that He is our true Father and that we are His true children, so that we may pray to Him boldly and confidently as children ask their Father. So this is God. When we call God our Father, we say, this is someone we can go to all the time to pray. He's going to listen to us, just like the Father can listen to their child. All right, so why do we call God our Father? That's question 247. We're on page 243 in the Catechism. And the first passage we got there is Malachi 2, verse 10. Jake, can you read that passage for us? <laughs> All right, who created us? God, yeah. So if God created us, that makes us our father, right? So that means God's the father of anyone who lives on earth. So God created us. One reason why we call him father. Second reason, Galatians 4, verses 4 and 5. Myra, go ahead and down. When the set time has fully come, God had thus sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem us under the law, that we might receive adoption to son. Yeah, so God said, he sent his son, he sent Jesus, to save us from the law, to buy us back from sin, so that he might adopt us. So when we come into faith, that makes us God's, makes us God's children, yeah. So we're children of God through creation, and we're children of God through faith. You should have these two things written down for that question. That's going to definitely be on the test. That's coming the next one coming up in a couple weeks. We can call God our Father because one, He created us. Two, we have faith in Him. Through faith, we become His children. All right, next question, 248. What does God, our Heavenly Father, do for us? So a father takes care of their children. 
He should provide for them, do all those things. What does the Bible say our Heavenly Father does for us? First John 3, verse 1, on page 244. Laura, can you read out a Jade book, please? First John 3, verse 1. It's the first passage on page 241. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. So, what does the word lavish mean? You guys know what that means? All right, so that means to, to give something over and above to the extreme. So, if you fill up your cup and it is overflowing, it's kind of what lavish means. It's just so much that you can't even contain it. So this passage is saying God has lavished his love on us because God is our father. The first thing that he does for us is he loves us. Just like a father loves your child. All right, next passage, Proverbs 3, verse 12. Ethan, go ahead and read that one. Proverbs 3, 12, page 244. The Lord is the son of the love. And the father of the son to delight him. All right. So if a father loves their son, what's he going to do to his son? He's going to discipline. Yeah. Discipline, it helps them learn not to do what's wrong. Sometimes there needs to be a discipline for things that you do that are bad. Because otherwise, how do we all learn what's, what's right and what's wrong? So God, our father, is sometimes going to discipline us. He might give us things that are hard in life or punishments that come as a result of our sin. So we learn, okay, this is something that's wrong. And God, our Father, wants us to know. So he loves us. He disciplines us. And the last thing, Psalm 145, verses 15 and 16. My go ahead and that one. I can all look to you, and you give them their food, and their help is mine, and their help is mine. You open your hand, and you open your hands, and satisfy the desires of every living thing. All right. What does God give everything at the right time? He gives food. Yeah, he provides for us. Every single thing we have, though, that daily bread that we talked about earlier, every provision we have, it all comes from God our Father. He's the one that gives it to us. All right, how is our Heavenly Father different from our earthly fathers? So, if I look at any passages, think about it. What makes God the Father different from a normal dad, normal human dad? Yeah, he created everything. And so I'll ask you this. Who's the only person that could create everything? The true God, right? So God, our Heavenly Father, he's the Almighty God. My dad is not Almighty, and he's not God. I'll tell you. So that is what makes him different. Our Heavenly Father is the Almighty God. Mark. That's the father to everybody. That's the father to everyone, yeah. My father is not the father of everyone. He's just the father of me and my brother that God, the father, he's everyone's father. Let me ask this question. Is your dad perfect? No. Dad's really messed up sometimes. Is God our only father? Yeah, so that's another big difference. Our earthly fathers, they might mess up, but our heavenly father, he's never going to mess up. He's perfect. I got one more on this too. The Almighty is perfect. That's all I have. Right. So that's the question 249. God and Father is different because He is the Almighty God, the true God, and He's perfect. That's what makes Him different. How should we pray the Lord's Prayer? Or any prayer for that matter, whenever we pray to God, how should we do it? Got both passages there on page 245. So we're looking at question 251 now, bottom page 245, Ephesians 3, verse 12. Gabe, can you read that one for us? And here is every case, and there we may approach God with fear and confidence. All right, what does that passage tell us about how we should approach God in prayer? Freedom and confidence. Yeah, freedom and confidence. So I'll talk about that first word, freedom. How does how would it look like if you play, if you prayed freedom? Let me think. Let me ask this question: If you pray freely, 
Are you going to withhold anything? Are you going to hold anything back from God? No, if yeah, if you pray freely, you're going to bring any any request you have because you know you are free to do that. All right, so that was the first one. Second one is you pray with confidence. How can you, what does it mean to pray confidently? So I pray for God to, to, to do what he promises. If I pray for God to strengthen my faith, which is something he promises to do, can I be certain God's going to do that? Yeah, because God promises me he'll do that. So we can pray confidently, knowing God's going to hear it, God's going to answer it. In James 1, verse 6, my go ahead and that one. Sometimes you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like the wave of, like the, wave, the, wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. All right, yeah. So if you see a wave in the water, it doesn't stay put. It's moving around, changing. When we pray, God says he doesn't want us to be like a wave that's moving around, that's not certain, that's not stable. He wants us to be sure. So when we pray, we need to believe and not what? Not doubt. Yeah. So we don't want to we don't want to pray to God but really thinking to ourselves, okay, I'm praying this, but I don't really think God's listening. I don't think God's gonna answer my prayer. God doesn't want us to do that. God just says believe because we can trust him. So when we pray, we pray with freedom, we pray with confidence, knowing God is going to answer us, and we pray without doubt. We don't wonder, is God gonna hear this? I believe. Yes, God will hear my prayer because he tell us when he will. All right, so looking at question 252 on page 246. What are we confessing when we acknowledge that our Father is in heaven? So that's kind of what we talked about with the difference between an earthly father and our heavenly father. We said our heavenly father is the almighty God. He's perfect. So what do we, what do we say when we say, all right, our Father is in heaven? And we're going to look at one passage to describe it. It's Ephesians 4, verse 6 on page 246. You think you read that one for us? Ephesians 4, verse 6, on page 246. One God and Father of all, who is over all, though all and all, through all. Yeah, so over all, through all, and in. So, got a little part for us to help us think about this passage. So, this circle represents all things. You can think of it as like the world, it's all things. This passage tells us, number one, God is over all things. What does it mean that God is over all things? Yeah, that he's in charge. He's, he's ruling and he's controlling all things. So when we say God is a heavenly father, I'm saying God is in charge of everything. We say, oh, all things. We say God is through all things. What does it mean that God is through all things? This is kind of the this is the weirdest one of the three. Any thoughts on that? Well, does God work through different people? Yeah, so God, God is saying he also works through all things. He's, he's, he's ruling all things, he's doing all things, working through all things. And finally, God is in all things. So God is in all things. You know, we studied with God at the very beginning of the year. God is omnipresent. That means he's everywhere. So God is also in all things. So not only is God up in heaven, but he's in each and every one of us. He's in everything we do. So that's what we're saying when we have our Heavenly Father. We're saying that he rules all things, he works through all things, and he is present in all things. All right. Main points review now. So there's going to be a couple of review questions here. And if you answer a question, there are some incentives in here. So I can't do that, you say. All right. First question. And we'll do this by raise of hand after I get done reading your question. What is prayer? My right side hand first. Uh, let me think. A way, a way to take steps and trust in God and share with Yeah, so it's a conversation with God where you show trust in Him. Exactly. Yeah. 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 All right, next question. Make a list of three things we should pray for. Think about three things we should pray for. I saw Daisy at first. What do you got? Help. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are three things you can pray for. You can pray for God to help you. 
Pray for God to give you confidence. Pray for your family. Yep. Good word. Oh, someone got that one. Sorry. All right, next question. In what two ways is God our Father? We'll give Laura a chance. Laura. Um, he Bingo. Nice. Ready? Easy got it. There we go. Laura, you know, you can get to that. All right, so yeah, God created us, and he's our father through faith. What makes our heavenly father different from an earthly father? Rose. He's perfect, and he's created. Yeah, he's perfect, and he's the almighty God who made all things. All right. Oh, my goodness. I can't throw that 50 piece tonight. Larry can give me the assist. Thank you. All right. I think I have one question left. One question left. What does our Heavenly Father do for us? So I'm Iris hand up first. He provides us food on the day. He loves us and cares for us. And, and... Yeah, so the two, two big things we talk about, he loves us every day on the daily. He cares for us. He gives us everything we need. And let's see, there's one more thing we talked about that God our Father does for us. It starts with a D. Remember that one? Discipline, yeah. So God disciplines us too because he wants us to know what's right and what's wrong. So, yeah, two things that go on and you can go on for that. All right, good job. So you guys got that done pretty good. What prayer is everything that has to do with prayer? Why do we call God our Father? Thank you guys for work on that. Good work. All right, so that was all I had for tonight. Um, we have five minutes left. We've got to hand it tuck back. We got these from last year. I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to go to the next one. We are not going to, we're not going to do you have your test if you did, because if you do, I can grade that for next time. So we're not going to talk about it since Jay and Laura still have their test. Take your test home, talk through with your parents. If you have questions, ask them. If you, next time, if you think you want to take another blank test back home and you want to try to redo parts of it that you struggled on, you can work with that with your parents and get some credit back. Um, but yeah, we'll talk about the test more next time once everyone has gotten their test back. Laura, do you have a test? Oh, perfect. I'll get those corrected. Yeah. Last thing I need you guys to do, I think, sorry if you're not ready, but we got the new bowling that coming up on the 12th of January. So here's the clip, you don't need your parents. You can ask them if you want to go. You don't have to come to the lunch with them. And before we head up, let's close tonight with prayer together. Let's start from now. We can we can pray. Here. Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us together in your word once again tonight. Thank you for the gift of prayer that we know that we can always go to you and talk to you, our Heavenly Father. Please continue to bless our study. Please continue to bless the students that they work hard to keep studying your words, keep learning more and more about you. In your name we pray. Amen.